In this session, we are going to discuss round robin CPU scheduling discipline with one numerical problem. So before going for this round robin scheduling, let me tell you what was the disadvantage with priority scheduling. The main disadvantage with priority scheduling will be that those processes which will have the priority lower will be suffering starvation because higher priority processes will be executed at first then only the lower priority processes will get the chances that is the point number one point number two is that let us suppose the higher priority processes are having a long burst time as a result of that when the lower priority processes will come they will be suffering a long waiting time also so as a result of that the average waiting time the average turnaround time the average response time will get degraded so that was the main disadvantage of priority scheduling but in case of round robin scheduling what will happen we shall give a time slice to each and every process for its execution time slice means a duration of time also known as quantum so for each and every quantum i shall give the cpu to the respective process and in this way the process will get executed for that particular time duration after that the cpu will be taken from that very process and it will be given to another process depending upon the scheduling criteria so in this way we shall have a very fair utilization of this particular scheduling algorithm fair means all the processes will get the almost will have the same priority for execution and as the shorter burst time processes will require lesser number of quantums so they will get executed and completion earlier and those processes which are long enough they will get execution later on and not execution completion later on so in this way we are having a very fair scheduling for all the process execution but that is one disadvantage of uh, round robin scheduling taking away the cpu from a process and allocating to another process it is known as context switching so that is the overhead to the system and the system will have to bear that overhead in case of um, your round robin scheduling okay now let me go for one problem with the numerical values here we are having four processes p1 to p4 and the burst durations are given and the quantum duration is given it is 20 so now let me draw the net chart for this particular problem so i shall take the p1 at first so here it will start at 20, uh, 0 and it is quantum is 20 so at 20 instant of time p1 will get completed not completed p1 is having 53 so at that instant of time cpu will be taken away from it now it will be given to p2 now the thing is that p2 is having a duration of 17 and quantum is 20 so cpu will be allocated to p2 for 17 units of burst time so there should not be any idle time for the cpu so p2 will be executed for 17 units of time okay next next will be p3 now p3 is having a burst time of 68 so 20 can be given to it so i'm making this one 57 then so p1 p2 got completed okay now we are going for p4 p4 is having a burst time of 24 so one quantum can easily be allocated so it will be 20 so it will be 77 now p1 is remaining with 33 units of burst time because 20 given so 33 units of burst time so another quantum can be given to it so it will become 97 20 duration p2 got completion so p3 so p3 is having the remaining burst time of 48 because 20 gave to it earlier so now another burst quantum can be given to p3 so it will be 117 now p4 p4 is having only so p, in case of p4 20 gave so now only 4 is pending so p4 will be executing for 4 units of time so p4 got completion so now for p3 p1 p1 has has got quantum for twice so 40 unit of burst time completed now it is remaining with 13 so p1 for 13 13 units of time so it will be 1 3 4 so p1 got completed so i'm remaining only with p3 
So how many times P3 got? First time, second time. So what is the total duration? 40. So 40 minus this 68, I'm with the 28. So I shall give P3 two slots. First time 20. Means 60. So now 8 remaining. So I shall give another 8. I shall give another 8. Let me go for addition. 53 plus 17. What is that? That is 70. 70 plus 68 means 138. 138 plus 24. What are you getting? So they are matching. So I think I am in the right track. Now let me go for the average waiting time calculation. So average waiting time Average waiting time will be this. So now, how to calculate average waiting time? At first, I shall go for P1. You see, P1, after 121 instant of time, P1 need not to wait. So I shall take 121, P1. And prior to that, it is having 20 plus 20. 40 units was used for P1 only. So minus 40. Okay, so P1 after 121, P1 need not to wait. Prior to that, P1 utilizes CPU for 40 units of time. So 121 minus 40. Considering all the arrival times are at the at zero, all the processes are available at the initial instant. Now I shall go for P2. So P2 is having after 20 units of time, P2 need not to wait. So P2 is having 20. Now I shall go for P3. P3 after 134 units of time, P3 need not to wait. So 134. And prior to this 134, P3 got first time and second time, two slots. So minus 40. For P4, after 117, P4 need not to wait. So 117. Now see, for this P4, it got sl uh, slides this time slice once prior to that. So minus 20. So whatever the value you are getting after doing this algebraic uh, formula, after calculating from this, this equation, that is the average waiting time. So in this way, in case of round robin scheduling, how to calculate the average waiting time that I have shown you here. And considering that all the processes have arrived at instant time, instant zero. So in this way, I have completed FCFS. SJF, priority scheduling, round robin scheduling. In the next video, we shall discuss multi level queue scheduling and multi level feedback queue scheduling. Thanks for watching this video.